Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. I hope you all are having a wonderful Christmas week. It's a beautiful sunny day here in December in East Tennessee and it's a great day to film a video just five days till Christmas. Today I'm going to be talking about my Catlias and caring for them in the winter, what they're doing and what they look like this time of the year. I have my GCT Lawless Gloriana on the right. I have grown her for 20 years. And I have my new No ID Catlia that I call Patrick on the left. As you all know, I divided Gloriana at the end of this past summer, and Patrick sent me a division of his No ID in exchange. They're both growing really well. They have lots of new root growth and root tips. That's what my Catlias are doing this time of the year. They grow new roots in December, and that's about all they're up to. They form flower sheaths, but there aren't any buds yet showing in those sheaths. Let me show you what a flower sheath looks like. Okay, this is a flower sheath right here in between these leaves. It doesn't look too glamorous right now, but wait until about February, about six short weeks away. Then you're gonna see some buds growing in the sheaths, and then the countdown is on until they bloom. And Gloriana always heralds spring for me every year, and I expect that Patrick is gonna do the same. Right now they're in my sunroom and they're getting full Western sunlight. The leaves on the huge trees in my backyard have all fallen off and there's no filtering of the sunlight through those leaves now. So they're getting full winter sun. Let me show you where they normally stay. Okay, their home is usually in that corner that you see. They're beside of Magic Art. And as you see, all of the leaves have fallen off the trees. All the trees are bare. So that's full Western winter sunlight. Winter sunlight here isn't nearly as strong and hot as it is through the rest of the year. In February, the sunlight through those windows gets much brighter and hotter, and I'll have to put up temporary shading until the tree in the backyard has leaves again. So they're getting plenty of sunlight now, even though it's winter. I'm watering and fertilizing the Cattleyas pretty often right now about every five days. They were both repotted in New Zealand sphagnum moss back in September, and I'm lifting the pots every four or five days to make sure that there's enough moisture in their pots for them. I've noticed that actively growing root tips really soak up the water, and they get thirsty this time of the year. Plus, my heating system is cutting on back here pretty often. So while there's active growth, I like to make sure there's enough water and fertilizer to back it up. While the root tips are growing, I'm fertilizing them at about 170 to 180 parts per million at every watering. And I'm flushing the pots with just reverse osmosis water once a month. So you can use your orchid fertilizer at about one third to half strength while there are new root tips forming. They don't like a higher dose of fertilizer while the roots are growing. It will burn the root tips. Cattleyas are a study in patience. When they're blooming, they're absolutely spectacular. My Gloriana is in bloom for about two to three months of the year. The blooms are very long lasting and I enjoy them as much as I can while it's in bloom in the spring. But for the rest of the year, this is what they look like. It's the care that you take of them through the year that is the key. At the end of spring, the blooms fall off, and when it comes out of bloom, I actually feel a sense of loss because they're so beautiful. You'll see the painting in the back behind these that my husband did a few years ago so that I can enjoy the blooms, at least in the painting, all year long. Here's a close-up of the painting. You can tell that she is very much loved. Um, 
I keep this painting around me all the time. It just makes me happy. And it is a very, it's a wonderful capture of the blooms of Gloriana. So usually before the blooms fall off the plant, the canes start growing and they grow throughout the summer and I give them plenty of fertilizer. Then around July or August, the sheaths start to form, just like I showed you. And then in September, the new root tips emerge from the new canes and now they're growing. And that's the growth pattern of my Cattleya. And my new one is growing roots and new root tips. So he seems to be following the same growth pattern as Gloriana. We'll see if he's any different in his growth pattern than she is this year. It's really exciting for me to get a new Cattleya. And my new one is going to be a showstopper. I speak that over my orchids all the time and they never let me down. Some more information that may be helpful to you all is that my sunroom stays about 70 to 70 degrees Fahrenheit during the winter. My humidifier that you see is running all day today because it's so cold outside. The humidifier has really helped me to achieve that. I keep the humidity back here about 40 to 45% since I got this automatic Ellicombs humidifier and it's made my life a lot easier. It keeps the humidity in here much more constant and that helps keep the temperature constant as well. The more stable that I can keep those two things, the humidity and the temperature, the better things grow in here, especially in the winter when the weather can be so unpredictable. So one of the things to keep in mind is that what you see here, pseudobulbs and foliage, is what your cattleya is going to look like most of the year. For mine, about nine months out of the year, it just looks like a very interesting green plant. I just love the foliage of these plants. And then when they bloom, it's amazing. And this plant, my Gloriana, this is the first orchid I ever had success with. She's near and dear to my heart. She's bloomed for me every year like clockwork for 20 years. So she's one of my favorite things in the world as probably the painting behind these suggests, right? Yes, one of my favorite things. Well, before I end this video, I want to let you all know how much I appreciate you all and thank you so much for being such a blessing to me. I wish all of you and your families a very Merry Christmas. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Almighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Have a blessed Christmas full of his presence and peace. And we'll see you all next time.